Weaving threads of silk from cocoons is a tradition that goes back more than 1,000 years in Cambodia. But about 50 years ago, it almost disappeared. A brutal regime killed and tortured intellectuals, including artisans who specialised in this craft. Sorpei Um, who goes by PH, made it her mission to revive silkworm farming and Cambodian weaving. She has spent 20 years teaching people how to raise worms and turn their silk into textiles using an ancient technique called ikat. In honor to our ancestors. We visited PH's silk farm and boutique in Siem Reap to see how a new generation ensures this ancient craft is still standing. Making silk starts from the ground up. Farmers plant fields of mulberry trees for golden silkworms to feast on. This was once a popular tree across Cambodia, but most were torn out by the Khmer Rouge in the 1970s to make way for rice plantations. The country's famous golden silkworms lost their habitat and they nearly died out. <laughs> Once the leaves are harvested, workers transfer them to breeding sheds. Silkworms feast on shredded leaves for 12 days before they can eat a whole one. It is important to keep this space clean. After 25 days, they turn yellow and are ready to spin. Workers hang them on this structure that allows airflow. It takes about four days for the worms to build their yellow cocoons. The best ones go to a breeding area and the rest of the cocoons will become silk. Workers drop them in boiling water to release the fibres. They use a spatula to catch them, then insert them into the spindle. They reel out the silk slowly in one continuous motion so it doesn't break. The outer part of the thread is rough, like horsehair, and they use it for cheaper scarves. Artisans scrape it off to reach the inner layer and make sure the threads are even. This is the best part of the silk and what they need for their ikat textiles. They wash, stretch and soften the yarn by hand and hang it to dry. Designing and weaving just one two meter piece of fabric can take three years. Thin A.M., who goes by Crum, was an orphan when she started working here 18 years ago. Today, she has mastered every step. She says the hardest part is the tie-dyeing technique. Artisans are essentially creating the images, using knots. The different coloured plastics represent each colour in the final design. They spend up to a year just tying the threads. In the past, people in Cambodia used banana trunks to do this. They prepare the material for dyeing using natural and native ingredients such as tree bark, 
turmeric and insect eggs. Workers add them to the boiling water. They strain the mixture to create a smooth consistency. Then dip the knotted silk in the steaming batch. The plastic knots protect sections of the pattern from the dye. This variety of resist dyeing is called ikat, from the Indonesian word for bind or tie. When the dyed part is dry, workers cover it with new knots and cut the plastic wrapping from the next section. They'll repeat this process hundreds of times with different colours and threads. They move the threads to the spinning jenny and prepare them for the loom. Silk weaving in Cambodia dates back to the 7th century. It was on the maritime silk road between China and India. And diplomats across Asia would wear the textiles, marvelling at their quality. The craft survived hundreds of years, but it was almost completely lost when the communist Khmer Rouge regime seized control in the mid-1970s. In its drive for a peasant utopia, the regime targeted the elite and educated, which included silk artisans. Nearly a quarter of the population was killed in what became known as the Cambodian Genocide. Krum was only a child during the regime, but she remembers her family's struggle. She says working here has changed her life. Today, every time she sets up a loom and weaves a new piece, she feels proud. PH says the loom she's using is similar to the ones used in the 12th century. Setting it up takes one month. She adjusts the shuttle regularly to make sure it aligns with the dyed ikat pattern. She adds the threads to small spindles and moves the shuttle from one side of the loom to the other to create the design. But PH sees it as a commitment to her history and culture. Two decades ago, she poured everything she had into starting her company, Golden Silk PH. There are around five other silk farms across Cambodia that follow these traditional techniques. PH sells these silk products in her boutique to museums and art collectors. Because it takes years to make each piece, they often sell for tens of thousands of dollars. Today, she employs 42 people who make clothing, shawls and tapestries. She says it's her way of strengthening the dignity and pride of Cambodian people. Today, 
ต่อปีกหายท่าคำพิมพ์ได้สดัดยืมบานเธอยืมบานเธอดอกเป็นนั่งเป็นตายยังจองช่วยไม่ได้อบานตื่นแต่นักก็ให้คื